I'm Cass Parker for MMH, the home of Rock Radio, joined by From Manjay and Drummer Rich from Grand Theft Audio. Hi, welcome, welcome. Hello. And today, today we're here to talk about something very exciting, the impending release of your new single and video, Ruin Your Youth. So thank you for catching up with me. How, how are you? How's lockdown treating you? All right, not too bad. I think surviving. It's hard to tell, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm just uh, the same as everyone else. E each week seems to be a new, a new thing and a, another facet of eternal hell at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's all right. We're managing, living. Are you all right, Rich? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, <laughs> it's the same as last time, but even more boring, isn't it? Second time. Yeah. Yeah, I've sort of, I've run out of all the great things to do now. Have you? I've sort of done all my bit. Yeah. Did you do anything weird, exciting, interesting, any new hobbies on the first lockdown? I played a lot of Monopoly with the kids. Oh. Yeah. Do you know what I did? I, I, I spent a great deal of my time inventing the perfect um, vessel to parachute an egg out of the top of the window of the house without it breaking when it hit the floor. I think <laughs> we spent about a week doing that. So if NASA or anyone wants to know now, I'm like the authority on it. Oh, incredible. <laughs> That's probably the best use of a lockdown I can ever imagine so yeah I'm, I'm, massively. I made cakes I've never made I never make cakes but I did oh that. man yeah Thank yeah we, there's been a lot of banana bread in this house yeah. I never knew we had so many bananas <laughs> knocking around I've never seen a real one in the house before but we got about <laughs> six tons of banana bread still mouldering away no better in <laughs> bread uh no it was uh, definitely I was definitely more productive last time for sure um right so Basically, new singles being released on the 27th of November. And before we talk about that, I rarely read such an interesting backstory to a band, actually. And I know it was summarised by the expression rags to riches and then rags again. So I thought I'd just give... Well, that, that's from your material. That's not even me making it up. But... Um, I thought, so true. In case anybody who watches this isn't aware, tracks from your debut album, Blame Everyone, from the year 2000, were featured in Dude Where's My Car, American Pie 2, Gran Turismo 3, and FIFA 2001. And it is a great album, actually. I have been listening to it um, ahead of doing this interview. So really, really good album. Um, but I don't want to dredge up the past. Um, and I know since then, I know you've all been busy and it hasn't necessarily been a case of living in rags. Um, but evidently, nostalgia's worked its magic. And here you are, found each other again. So are you excited about getting some new music out there 20 years on? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's really what's... But the most pivotal thing has been the music again. And I think what, what got, you know, massively blurred during that band was was why you were, what actually brought you together. And it was we had that common thing of of, of sort of musicality without sounding too pretentious between us. But you know, like um, you know, like kind of a batch acid and water, it shouldn't really mix, but then when you do it, it, it you know, you get something good out of it. And and I suppose, yeah, nostalgia's not what it used to be and all that, but we, uh, there's something nice about, you know, and the, and the sort of uh, the bond of friendship of doing it together again, you know, has been, you know, something that's sort of drawn me back anyway. I don't know about Rich, I think Rich is just in it for the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So much of it as well. Yeah. yeah. I think now, now we're starting to do stuff like this, you know, it's like it's real again and the singles yeah. and people are starting to hear and yeah. talk about the band again and we're starting to do in interviews it's like oh my god it's actually you know it's happening we're back doing it again so yeah, yeah. this is the exciting bit now you know letting people actually hear what we've been up to oh cool no well what i look i was reading your facebook and um i read this post that says this right i have to read it out properly because i'll get it wrong otherwise <laughs> as the ever present specter of further lockdowns new world order and martial law looms a tiny ray of putin sunshine for you 76.4 percent <laughs> guaranteed to assuage all lockdown paranoia and existential dread along with giving you more than a fighting chance at preventing becoming an unperson so i was like somebody had a lot of fun writing that <laughs> And I was thinking, um, social media didn't even exist back in 2000. And no. for me, it's, it's simultaneously the greatest way to stay connected that has ever existed and the root of all evil. So I yeah. just to ask, how does it feel? Does, them, does it feel like a very different music scene now than it was for you back in 2000? 
Can I answer this, Rich? Yes, go for it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like for me, it's probably more, that's probably more relevant for me than it is for Rich, because Rich has been involved, obviously, with the Wild Hearts. And, yeah. and I, after the band finished last time, I, I completely stepped away from music. So, you know, I had nothing to do with it. And you're right, the, the whole landscape is complete. It's a different planet. It's not just a different landscape. Um, you know, we're probably the last era of bands uh, were you know like like it is in the films where a guy comes on and goes hey you guys are great and gives you a million pounds and off you go and you know do drugs and drink for until you can't stand up anymore and you know we're coming back into it like you say it's completely different i think the only plus about it like you say is a is a heaven and hell thing with social media but the, the plus now is you you've got more control of of being yourself you're representing yourself and i think for people who like you they can actually get to know you a bit better whereas when we were doing it before you know internet had just started there was a forum i think we had on our web page and people would write and leave messages and we'd get pissed and write, speak up your nose you know whatever and be very punk rock but that was the limit really and now you know it feels like at least you've got the opportunity to sort of be a bit more truthful about the way you present yourself as you'd like to i suppose yeah no i think that's nice how about you rich how does it feel? I suppose you've been more involved, like like Jason. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, there was uh, when we were touring America. I remember we used to. I mean, this is how we used to, you know, kind of get people's information to be able to interact with them later. Would be like asking them to fill out little cards at the merch stand <laughs> and put their names and email on, you know, and then we'd all sit on the bus after the gig and we'd all be on the laptops filling out people's names kind of thing you know yeah. and uh obviously they'd all be completely wrong because we'd be pissed up and then you'd look at it the next <laughs> day <laughs> what well, doesn't even say anything so uh yeah, yeah that was, do that you think was... we wasted our time sending all those telegrams to people <laughs> yeah. like the faxes. we used to buy a fax machine slowly yeah sending lithograms and, and yeah. those victorian uh, shadow drawings yeah, yeah. Oh, bless. Well, so, remember, actually, I re oh, go on, sorry. Oh, no, carry on, carry on. Oh, I was just going to say, that's just reminded me, of, we, were playing, we were playing some shows right in the middle of America, and, um, and I remember the one, uh, there was a couple of gigs where we'd, I'd, like that night, been on the bus putting all the names down, and then the, the next day I looked at it, and like out of all the hundreds of names, there were only about three surnames. In <laughs> <laughs> we were like, holy shit! Oh, well. <laughs> totally related. It's like insane. Oh. Yeah. We were the best at stealing defeat from the jaws of victory at every opportunity, though, weren't we? <laughs> oh, Even as we read out like our back catalogue, I was like, how did we fuck that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you got a second chance now. Plus, you we'll have... do it again. We'll do it quicker than we did it last time. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds like you have fun no matter what you do, so that's good. Um, well, before we talk about the single, so has, has the current way of life influenced the way you've been working together and writing and what you've been writing about all of those things? Mm, well, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, content-wise, for sure. Someone asked me this, um, we did an interview the other day, and someone asked me, and, and, you know, the bottom line is, we, we couldn't have, and I don't think anyone would have been interested in doing like Blame Everyone Part 2 because you haven't got the same oomph of things to say or, or sounds you want to hear as you did when you were in your 20s. And obviously for all of us, we've all gone on and, and you know, you get older. And so your things, I'm not saying you necessarily mellow, but you do to an extent. And, and also your spectrum hopefully widens. Yeah. So there's a, probably a little bit more diversity on it without sounding all la da um, but yeah and I, and I mean as far as the way of working goes obviously we're the same as everyone that's been really affected by the current thing you know because before we did you know we managed to dredge an album out of being in a room together constantly 24 hours a day pissed um, and smoking a thousand cigarettes and out of the end of it came this beautiful shiny jewel somehow and you know this time you, you know we've very rarely been together in the same room um but certainly been not any getting pissed and certainly not any smoking fags so you did you know what i mean it's been a different yeah. i think this experience. time we've had, a, we've had a little bit more time to kind of reflect on the ideas mm. whereas you know so we've we've, we've lived with 
ideas for like a few days or even weeks before we say, right, let's carry on with that. Whereas like with the first album, we would literally have been like, right, we've got to get this finished so we can get down the pub and, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. and <laughs> new song the next yeah. day. Kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah I mean, which has definitely worked in our favour, I think, because, it, you know, I think it's yeah. worth spending a bit of time on your ideas. Yeah, definitely. I think that's one of the biggest differences. We seem to have learned patience and we didn't have any before. I didn't yeah. even have patience sometimes to even get you do a vocal tape. But that, that'll do, that'll do, on to the next one. <laughs> but Jay, it's the wrong words. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, fair enough. Well, you have got that punk rock, rock vibe, so who gives a shit, you know, ultimately? So, uh, right, yeah, yeah. so, so we're obviously expecting something slightly more polished this time around then, but... Um, Actually, shall we just talk about the single? Because we're talking, we're already starting to talk about it. So let's just move straight on to it. So, um, Ruin Your Youth released 27th of November. Um, so basically, people, go and get it. It'll be available on all streaming platforms on your website, I presume. Anywhere they can get it. Anywhere they yep. can find it, they can get it. So go. All the usual places. Absolutely. So... I read that you say you want to create songs that are equal parts unabashed, a rabble rousing, pointed sonic assault, and shameless aural gratification. And I can't argue with that. <laughs> I've, only, I've only heard the one song, but I'd, I'd go with that. That's fair enough. Um, oh, one song from the new stuff. Sorry, I have heard the first album. Um, and again, some of the press quote, quotes that I read I thought were quite nice, so I thought I'll read them out for people um, who haven't read them. But Kerrang! magazine said, it's an ultra-modern algorithm of big beat rhythms, chunky metal riffs, quirky samples, and bratty sneering vocals, unpredictability, fearlessness, and total attitude, and that you take American new metal and kick it at the ass with a boot full of UK punk filth that screams in your face and runs off giggling. So I thought, that's nice. Not bad, actually, is it? Not bad, I think I can't argue with that again. And um, I mentioned before uh, we started, but I do um, a bit of an interview review combo with my friend Tina C, who also works on MMH. And um, we will publish the review alongside this interview, so everybody will be able to read it in full. But I thought you'd be pleased to hear what she wrote about the single. She says... Fast forward from 2000 to 2020, the year of which we should never speak of, and we have something to speak of. Grand Theft Audio are back, and boy are they back. Ruin Your Youth is a snot-nosed punk pop poke in the eye, a fine slab of edgy British power pop rock, which is only to be expected when you consider their pedigree. Plenty of melodic hooks delivered amongst brash vocals, heavy bass lines, and metal guitar noise. What's not to love? So oh, that's, nice. that's all right, isn't it? So yeah, we'll be able to read really. that for themselves. So I thought I'll stop talking now and um, basically hand over to you to just tell people why they should, what they need to know about the blood, sweat and tears that have gone into it and why they should go and buy it or download it. Ooh. Oh, the single. Can you actually um, go for it? <laughs> yeah, I think you, can, you can't buy it yet, not until it comes out. You can when you... 7th, but when this, by the time this interview goes out, it'll be, it'll be pending, it'll be any time. Yeah. And could even be... Yeah, well, I mean, we, we can't sit here, I can't sit here and say we've reinvented the wheel. We haven't. But what I think we have managed to capture is, is you know, at this point, the nice thing is we haven't got anything to prove. We haven't got everything to, you know, we're not, when we, when we were going before, we were signed to a major label, we had a lot of expectation on us because at that point it was quite realistic that we might have been like, you know, you, it was every chance that you could have been like Green Day or, or Limp Bizkit or that's what they were signing you for. And so that comes with a lot of pressure. And with this, I feel like it's less been written to order and more been written from the heart, man, you know, it's a bit more personal. It's a bit more, um, I feel like it's got a bit more of, of us in it. Um, I don't know if that's a good selling point or not, is it, Rich? I won't oh, fucking it's... buy anything with me, yeah. would you? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, well, it's how it should be, isn't it? You know, it should be yeah. from the heart, you know, and I, I totally agree with that, even though we probably weren't really aware of it when we were making that album. 20 years ago, we, you know, it was definitely there, wasn't it, in the back of our minds, you know, that it was yeah. being, it had to be a certain thing. And this yeah. time now, that it's just not even coming to it. It's kind of like, we've just done, we've not had a conversation about, there's not been any mention of, right, what do we want to do? How do we want to do it? What, how do we want to present it? Yeah. 
yeah. just kind of yeah. just created it, and it's become what it's become naturally, which is a well, that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? So yeah. kind of I think in. there's a lot of love in it. There's been a lot of love in it. Well, as for me, I, I feel like it's, it's it's much more personal. It's much more, you know, it's it's a bit less lipstick and handbag and a bit more dirty pants for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why not? Well, I thought, I mean, I, my opinion, um, because this is this is my little bit, but uh, I put it's punky and ballsy, hits you right in the face and stays there, like when aliens suck us onto Sigourney Weaver's face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Does it pull on seeds down your throat that then explode out your chest? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's how I felt it. But it's also it's a great analogy. It's a proper earworm because it's catchy enough, I think, that even after one listen, you, you sing in the chorus and you're putting it straight back on for another listen. So I'm looking forward to hearing more from you guys because obviously I have only heard that one track from the album. Yeah. When is the album coming? Can you tell us? I think well, it's... Did we, is it, it's going to be springtime, isn't it, Rich? Oh. Jesus Christ, that's putting the pressure on, isn't it? Yeah, you said it was going to be like the first in of 20, January. In 22, <laughs> right? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think early mid next year, isn't it? The, yeah, the it'll be, yeah, when it when it's ready, I think we, yeah. we're just gonna. We, yeah, we've got a few singles to come. Hopefully, we just like keep working on a song at a time and keep releasing them. And when it feels like the right time to to release the album, then we'll do that. But we've, we've absolutely, definitely got an, over an album's worth of material. I was going to say, the difference now is we've got so much material. That's the complete opposite of the first time. Yeah. You know, we, we've got a, a plethora of stuff to pick from, which is nice. It's a really nice position to be in. Yeah, yeah. Well, we might even have the makings of album number two. You never know. <laughs> Um, well, not album number two, it would be album number three, wouldn't it? Of course. Um, so what about getting back out there live? Have you got any plans yet or are you just going to wait and see how it goes? Well, it's, it's, it's difficult really, isn't it, for, for everyone? I mean, we're no different. I mean, we, someone else asked us this as well and it's not, got nothing to do really with whether you do or don't want to. I'm quite, like I said, I, I, I quite like the idea of, you know, it's prancing around like a tit again at my age which would be funny but you know I, I, I think that it's the the practicalities of it at the moment no one can get anything sorted can they and I, I would hate as well I don't know how you feel about this Rich but I would hate for your first foray back into it can you think of anything weirder than it being like one of those virtual gigs oh, like yeah. for us that would just be bizarre wouldn't it yeah, I mean it was bad enough when no one was clapping and they were in the room, but like no one <laughs> clapping and no one in the room. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll just yeah. wait until yeah, wait until we're able to and let nature take its course, so yeah. to speak. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? You probably can't couldn't could do worse at the moment because a lot of things keep having to be moved and moved and moved, and mm. and I think you know it's it's a great thing that bands are trying so hard to get stuff scheduled in but you're right just chill out yeah. see it goes, and, and I'm sure you'll know when the time feels right all right I've got to say though you, did you see Chris's professionals one I thought that was really good I watched that and that was great they did a, a virtual gig oh. and they the way they did it was really good and really well done and yeah just, just give the boys some props I, I didn't see that one. I've seen a few virtual gigs and, and yeah, I mean, you know what? It's better than nothing and people yeah. are doing, and then there's live streams of old shows as well. There's been quite a few things, hasn't there, to try and keep people entertained. But, yeah. Um, we can, yeah, everyone's trying. Yeah, you can only do your best and I think the good thing about music fans is we'll take anything really that we can because it's as, it's as hard for the fans as it is for the bands going through this and not being able mm. to do music. It really is, so... We try to support where we can. Um, cool. All right then. So I'm going to ask you a few a few random questions now. We'll start with random ones, and then we'll see how weird they can get. Um, <laughs> you were mentioning earlier about the crazy hedonistic early days, and so it made me think of, I suppose, the old uh, oh, it's behind me, the Motley Crue, the Dirt film. If there was going to be a film made about Grand Theft Audio, who would you get to play you? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, anyone, I, know I'd, whoever I know I'd get straight away. I could have anyone in the world. Anybody, I'd yeah. Have that, I'd have that geese who played Spider from Coronation Street. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
he apparently like he, I did look a bit like him when I was younger and thinner, so I think he'd do actually. Oh, maybe. Plus, he's got like a northerny accent, so it wouldn't sound anything like me, which would be good. <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have Jay playing me. <laughs> I thought you'd have Slash. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have Jay playing me, and I want to play Jay. Oh, that'd be weird, wouldn't it? What if we didn't like each other? <laughs> As each other, we'd fall out really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I'd suddenly realise how much work you do, and I'd be like, oh, fuck this. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's a bad idea. It's a really bad idea. It's a really bad idea. That will end a friendship. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, I think... That's Spider from Curry, and then you s swap him for each Or Denzel Washington. That's my other choice. That's my oh, second right, choice. Well, <laughs> do you know what? I the weirdest thing is I was going to chuck that one in there because that's just the most the most random you could pick. But yeah, why not? Denzel can do a great job. Yeah, he's got a great ass as well. You ever checked out his ass? He's got no, a really, like, muscular looking backside. <laughs> it's cool. And my wife noticed it the other day and pointed it out to me. I was like, yeah, he's got a real muscly ass for an old guy. Yeah. He's like, yeah, he's buff. All right, I might check it out then after the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been. I've never felt motivated to in the past, but now I definitely need to. That's that's definitely going to be a thing. It's a facet of him that gets overlooked. Definitely. <laughs> All right then. Um, okay. Next question. This isn't. Well, you know what? I'm going to chuck this one in. It's not too random. But have you ever met any of your musical heroes, and has anybody ever made you starstruck? Which? Struck. Well, I've done a few shows. Supporting ACDC, and yeah, and we got to hang out with them quite a lot as well. Mm. And um, Brian Johnson used to hang out with us and come in our dressing room quite a lot, yeah. which was really cool. And it was very down to earth and a good laugh and he, really easy to get on with. But a couple of times we were invited into their dressing room and uh, and that was that was quite scary because, you know, it's just like, oh my god, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to say, and I ended up sitting right next next to Angus, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> what are you playing like, too much anymore? Uh, and, and was, <laughs> I like your ads. <laughs> and, and he just went, I don't know, we don't like it, or something, you know, and it was just like, oh, what a stupid thing to ask. Uh, it's horrible, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I, it is. For me, I, one of mine was. I've been lucky to meet a few, but one of them was Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols, who he was like a, a hero to me in as much. It wasn't really Johnny Rotten that I was, you know, in awe of. It was Steve Jones. It, that's really what got me into music. Yeah. Um, and I met him, and all that happened was I had my very first... It was really significant because I'd met someone who I'd wanted to meet all my life, and then a really important thing happened to me, my first ever proper panic attack right when I met him, which was awesome. <laughs> so I sat there, I still to this day, sort of every time I hear his name or see a picture of it, it makes me have palpitations. So I don't know what happened there, really. Oh. No, but it was just, I think it was the excitement. I don't know what it was. Quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, I think it was weird though. It was really weird. But yeah, it was everything I expected. Yeah. In a good way or a bad way? In a great way, yeah. He's just... Uh just nice you know he won't remember it at all but it meant a lot like everything does it meant a lot to me because it was like oh you know like it took me back to when I started being interested in music yeah. it was literally learning to play his songs or Sex Pistol songs and his thing and that and you know and that was what I wanted to do was be a guitarist and yeah and you know copy him so yeah very important oh sounds amazing oh I'm glad I asked you that question I've got a couple of weird ones just to change things up a bit if you're uh, if you're up for it so i'm just gonna go for it see what you think if go you, for it. what would be the most inappropriate movie to remake as a porno oh fucking hell <laughs> yeah that is a bit left field um free willy <sighs> et <laughs> yeah both of those would be ridiculous <laughs> Yeah. Well, I wouldn't a like to see E.T. with big long finger, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Free oh. Willy. There's bound to be a porno already called Free Willy. I'm absolutely <laughs> sure of that. I think it's probably slightly different. But um, but the E.T. <laughs> one has weirded me out completely. So well done for that. <laughs> That's probably going to haunt me. That serves me right. Um, 
All right, I've got a few. Um, I've got a few. Would you rather questions? So these should be fairly simple. So, um, we'll start with: Would you rather have the keys to the General Lee or Knight Rider's kit? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, General Lee for me. Mm. Pretty cool, isn't it? But then again, yeah, yeah. Can't drive oh, like, can't it? Oh, I like the lights at the front of Knight Rider. They were pretty yeah. cool. He was a bit of a prick, though, wasn't he? That robot. I thought he was a bit of a punce. He was all sort of, yeah, my fault, yeah, my fault. Yeah, my fault. And, you know, and if it was me, even if you saved me, I'd think, oh, fuck off. Like, you're always giving it the bigger. And always, yeah, Michael, I'll, yeah, yeah, we ought to do this, Michael. Do you know what? I sometimes just wish he'd have gone, oh, fuck it, just turn him off. If you were still drinking and he was driving you home and you didn't have to get a taxi, you'd live in there and you'd be like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that's true. But you'd be pushing that boost button all the time, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah jump it, jump it, jump the lights. <laughs> yeah, totally would. All right, then, would you rather cry cry every time you have sex or burp every time someone kisses you? I'd do both of them anyway. There's <laughs> 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 no choice. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then next one. Feel myself tearing up now. Oh, <laughs> you love this one. Would you rather have ball bags for eyelids or a willy for a nose? I've got ball bags for eyelids. <laughs> you sure, you got them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. No, it's, yeah it's, it's definitely the ball bag eyelids, isn't it? Because we've all got them already. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because sneezing, sneezing could be kind of awkward, couldn't it? His nickname for me is eye bollocks. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've called you eye bollocks for years. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I found that out. That's brilliant with that question. That's Very perceptive of you. No, it's all just playing into my hands. Um, all right, then, this is the weirdest question you'll ever be asked. Um, would you rather have a 12 inch belly button that sways to the music or accordions for legs? Oh, accordions for legs, for sure. <laughs> and why? That's you awesome. Yeah, you could sound like a punch up in a German brewery running down the road, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, like that. I think so. I think. I so. didn't even hear what you said about the belly button, but I'll go for the belly button. That sounded. It was a twelve-inch belly button that sways to the music. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I've always wanted a swaying belly button. <laughs> it sounds yeah. a bit grotesque, doesn't it? Like part of your stomach. <laughs> it's back to Alien again, isn't it? It's the uh, thing mm. like that. So that is, mm. that is about as weird as I can get. So I'm going to ask you a sensible question just to close the interview off. I'm going to say, what would you really love to happen next for this band? What would you sort of dream be? Oh, that's a good <laughs> question. Uh, do you mind if I answer this first, Rich? Go for it, mate. I, I would like, if I'm really honest, I would like for... It to be that that's going to sound so pretentious. I, I would like for people to for it to just get a little bit of not critical acclaim, but for people to like it. Yeah. Not not because not because it's you know anything. Not because it's the newest, or because, but because people sort of dig what you're doing. That that would that would be everything for me. I'd love that if people say it's really good music. It's not it's not that it's just a certain style and that suits now or anything. If people just said, no, that's a great song, that's a great album, I'd love that. Nothing pretentious about that. That's actually a really humble thing to say, I think. That's lovely. Because, no, I, I, you know, yeah, I think... Yeah, I think I'd, when we say, first... I'd, I'd add to that. I wouldn't even necessarily want, like, people to like it. I'd just like, I, I really hope that we get it out there enough so lots of people get to hear it and then decide yeah. if they they like it or yeah. not because that's the biggest kind of goal really is you know getting your music out to loads and loads of people for them to be able to make their mind up about it you know it's, and uh yeah let's hope that happens yeah well you know what yeah. the world we've got now it's probably easier to share stuff than it's ever been i mean it's not necessarily easy to make money from the music industry at all anymore but it's certainly easy to get yeah. stuff out there and share so hopefully that will happen for you and doing things like this you know again that's what we're trying to do is is get the yeah. message out there so um hopefully it all helps but that's yeah well i'm gonna say i mean i'm sure rich feels the same but i really appreciate how helpful you know like things like you're doing today 
it is, it, it, that's different. That's different. People seem to be more generous with their involvement now. Yeah. Whereas in the old days, people were being, you could tell people being paid to promote you or do this. And now it just seems like people are really generous with their time and with their input um, for the right reasons. So that is a, another thing that's changed. It's a lot nicer, I think. Yeah. I think, I think you're right. I think the connection to your audience, um, because it's, it's easier to be closer to a band, I suppose, because mm. more accessible, which is, it's got its, its good and bad things, you know. I mean, you have to be careful, I guess, with social media, but I think people are more accessible and that's appreciated by the musicians and the fans. So it has changed. The world has shifted from 20 mm. or even 30 years ago. You know, bands were untouchable then and now you feel like, you know, you, you yeah. are there, so you know a little bit more about them as, as people. It's not just in a magazine. It's, it can be about their daily lives, their opinions and all sorts of stuff. So mm. social media has got its benefits. You just have to be more careful, I think, than, yeah. than you were. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, maybe back in the day. So um, that sort of concludes things, really. So thank you so much for catching up with me. It's been lovely. Um, and I am looking forward to getting the music out there. I think people will love it and they will appreciate it and what you've done um, because it's great. I mean, you know, it's, it's a really, really good track. So oh, thank you. Fingers crossed for you. So thank you. I'll, I'll close off professionally. It's been awesome catching up with you. I've been Kaz Parker for MMH Radio, catching up with Jay and Richie from Grand Theft Audio. And thank you again. No, thank you. Thanks for having us. You're very welcome.